Hello everyone, greetings. Today is Sunday the 17th. Root chakra. Trust. Find balance. Trusting yourself, finding balance with your root chakra. The root chakra is associated with grounding energies. I feel like this is almost like the full card. Trusting, surrendering to the flow, trusting that you'll be caught with your endeavors. Finding balance within yourself is also number two. the flow with your emotions as well. Groundedness I keep hearing right now. Getting grounded. Trusting in where you're being led despite what's going on around you. Find your inner balance. Balancing out your root chakra going with the flow. Hi, Kathy. How are you today? I'm excited that uh, I can see who's watching. <laughs> so I wasn't sure if I can tell who, if I can do that or not. I love seeing all of your posts and how you're with your family and up north. I desire to go back up there sometime. Yeah, finding joy and stability when you find your balance.
Happy Easter. <laughs> Thank you. Same to you. Hello. So, oh, maybe because I'm live, I if I'm not friends with people. Hi, Heather. If I'm not friends with people, I may not be able to see who is watching. Thanks for coming on, even if just for a moment. Shine. Shine your light, your unique gifts. So this one was about... Root chakra came out first, or your base chakra. And then it was to trust yourself, to trust where you're being led, to trust the flow. Find balance within yourself, with all of your abilities. And that will also bring you joy and stability as you go with the flow and trusting where you're being led. But find that stability in your base, get grounded, go outside, hug a tree. That's what I did this morning. <laughs> I was hugging on that tree, even put my head on it so I can really hear it to really just get grounded because there's so much going on right now. But don't be distracted by what's going on. You still have to live your life because you came here with a unique purpose. Trusting in the flow. Go outside, listen to the birds. I can hear them from here. I don't know if you can hear them, but listening to the birds is also a method of grounding or just finding that balance within yourself to go with the flow. Hi, Jason. Um, thank you, Jason. I know you're doing your thing. I'm so proud of you. I would love to do an event or, Jason, if you would like to um, hire me for one of your events too as doing intuitive work for your guests I do um, I'm putting myself out there in that way too if you're interested what else I feel like starting over again let's see there's a lot of different energies going on right now Woodpecker reminds us to follow our own unique rhythms. I just saw Woodpecker out there. But I also see, what is that? A nuthatch. It's a type, a small bird, about the size of like a sparrow. And um, like a chickadee. But the way they're able to climb trees is different than other birds. And... Um, they're able to like hang on to the tree in different ways. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because sometimes we have to do that with our own. Hmm. Circumstances. Look at things from another perspective. Sometimes we have to go upside down to get a different perspective to viewing our circumstances so that we can go with the flow changing our viewpoint that was i i recorded the full moon reading uh full moon insights for the collective and um, that was one of the big things that came out in the message actually i gotta upload that video that was one of the big things in the message is to change our perspective on our life because we're blossoming in a new way and we're becoming new versions of ourselves, remembering parts of ourselves and, uh, and um, just to change our perspective of this world. And also it was highlighting with having that different perspective, looking at things from another perspective, kind of like the hangman in um, the tarot deck, but Nut Hatch was just reminding me of just how we have to sometimes look and another point of view, because if you've ever watched a nut hat, a nut hatch, or maybe even um, Google it, to to look at how they are, they they're able to with their feet, they're able to cling onto the trees in such unique ways, almost like woodpeckers, but a little bit different. But they're able to just kind of go in all different directions to find insects on the trees, and 
it's kind of like us. Sometimes we have to turn ourselves around in another way to get a clearer perspective of all of what's happening around us so that we can take action in a new way. That was just the message from Nuthatch. What else can I share right now, Divine Spirit? Thanks for watching. If you would like a personal reading, let me know. Um, I'll do a card for you. If you'd like a card, whoever's on right now, I'm not able to see. Are you still watching? You are still watching, Kathy. If you would like a card, let me know. This is what I'm offering. I'm being of service and I'm, and I'm practicing putting myself out there in new ways. So if you would like, uh, I guess I can add that in there, but if you would like a card or two or whatever comes out, I'm offering that right now while I'm live. So just comment below. I feel like doing this other deck now. This is the spirit animal deck. I'm very, very connected. I guess I didn't really introduce myself. Um, well, most of you know me as Rosalie Ina, and I do a number of different things. I'm still deciding what to really call myself. I don't really, I don't like labels <laughs> because I believe we're all so multifaceted and have so many gifts and abilities. So to call myself just one thing is like, how can I do that when I'm all of this? And you're all of this. So it's like, it's limiting. It's putting putting myself in a box and I am not trying to be in a box <laughs> because I'm I'm all, I'm, 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 I'm infinite and so are you. And, and that's kind of what I want people to know and to remember about themselves that you're so much more than what this world tries to, to have you limit yourself like we're limitless we are limitless and uh, so some of what I do I'm an animal communicator um, I also channel spirit but I also am able to tap into the higher realms of existence I'm a clear channel to source and um, I speak with the animals I understand their symbolism and the way they communicate with us and I'm going to be more and more sharing how I understand how they communicate with you or with the world because uh, we're supposed to work together, I believe. And we're supposed to work together with nature and with this earth and come back into balance and harmony in so many ways. Um, but nature communicates with us all the time and um, the universe communicates with us all the time through many signs and symbolisms. Hi, Andrea, or Andrea. Uh, and so I want to help everyone remember that, that there's signs all around us, there's support all around us, and sometimes, um, like right now, that the birds are all around here, just reminding me, like, yeah, keep going, keep going. <laughs> um, so I'm a psychic medium, I communicate with spirit, I communicate with ancestors, I communicate with loved ones that have passed on, but that also includes animals and um, uh, different beings that were close to you uh, or are supporting you, your guidance team. Um, what else do I do? I do card readings, um, but I also am a channel of the Akashic Records. Um, so the Akashic Records are Basically, if you the the quickest way that's coming to mind is like a central processing unit, a CPU that has all of the information of all of the lives you have ever lived, um, as well as information, ancient wisdom. Uh, I'm able to channel that, but also I'm able to be a, ch a channel of the Akashic Records in the sense of I offer one-on-one um, -on -one readings where it's an open conversation where we're whether we're doing it live like this in a session hi christine and able to 
connect and get myself in a certain level of frequency to just clearly channel and be open to the different beings from different dimensions as well as your guidance team to share information but also to channel healing so i'm also a healer an energy healer in many ways but i'm also a conduit i'm a conduit for spirit for source for the highest and best good so those are just a few things i do but i do so many things i'm an artist um, I like to create. I like to do many different things. You can always check out my website, rosaliesjourney.com to find out more as well. Um, there's so much to me. I like to have fun. I like to have joyous experiences. But I really like the animals in nature. I really do. And that's why I work with them. So much but I also am working to help us all find balance and harmony in our own unique way because we're all so unique we're all so unique and each of us have a unique purpose here and we're meant to work together with no judgment with love and I want to help people remember the divine unique spark within everyone by me doing what I'm doing and sharing what I'm, I've become. I, I, you know, a few years ago, I would have never thought that this is where I would be. And now I'm finding something that I really enjoy doing that makes me feel fulfilled. I also do, um, I'm really into astrology, I'm really into numerology. It's a lot of things. I'm very deep. I like to have deep conversations. I'm not one to have short conversations. It bores me. I get bored. <laughs> I like to have long and deep and ask questions and, and have that two-way conversation with another person or as a group to have deep conversations to talk about things that are real. Um, I'm kind of real. I don't, uh, how do I want to word this? Sometimes I like to talk about the uncomfortable things because that's real life. Uh, and, you know, some people like to bypass that stuff, but why? I don't get it. I personally don't get it. I know sometimes people are afraid of their feelings, but we got to feel our feelings. It's part of being human. We got feelings. We got to feel them. No matter what they are, or how uncomfortable they are. When you take the objective point of view, like you don't have to stay feeling the discomfort so much when you realize what it's showing you. That's a process. It took me a long time to get there, but um, I'm glad I got there. <laughs> There's a titmouse right there. I really love the birds. Birds are messengers. If you hear them in the morning or during the day or wherever, just sit and listen to them. It's very therapeutic. All right. Let me shuffle this one more time. All right, let's see. I see a northern flicker, which is another woodpecker, which is all about following your own rhythms and cycles. Okay, so <laughs> my inner self is like, you're a shaman. I'm like, I am a shaman. It's just, I'm still adjusting to calling myself that, although I have seen myself be a shaman in many lives. So lizard spirit, dream the world into being. Dream the world into being. This is number 38. Lizard spirit. Lizards are amphibians. And that three has to do with creativity. Three has to do with being assertive. Three is also associated with the ascended masters. And then the number eight has to do with power, your personal power 
It's an infinity. You're in, uh, the, you have infinite possibilities. Um, it's a force. Power eight is also associated with the force. So combining that, three and eight is 11, which 11 is the master illuminator. Uh, it's a messenger, spiritual messenger. Um, 11 has to do with taking action. So I feel like dream the world into being. I was getting that a lot actually this morning of really allowing your imagination to just create and do what it does, just allowing it. Your dreams and inspiration. I mean, imagination, that has also a lot to do with the conjunction of Jupiter and Neptune right now. Um, Neptune is about your imagination. It is about the dream world. It is about daydreaming, um, uh, illuminating that. And then you got Jupiter conjunct it, which Jupiter wants to expand everything that it touches. So it's expanding for us collectively our, our imagination and creating a new way of being, a new world, a new way of how we want our our outer reality to be. But first we have to imagine it and feel it as if it's happening, getting in that essence within ourselves. So I feel like that's what Lizard Spirit is, is asking us to do. And this is Sunday. This is the sun day. So the sun is an illuminary. Um, the sun has great force fire, the passion within us. That could be why root chakra or base chakra came out earlier in the other deck because that's our essence. This is how we are, uh, how we show ourselves to the world. I really like Sundays. I always get really hype on Sundays and today is a personal 11 two day. So it was most fitting for me to step a bit further and go live today. And, um, so dream your world into being. You can call on Lizard Spirit as well for assistance in doing that. Lizards are land. It depends on the lizard. Lizards can be land animals or beings. So it's associated with the earth element, that groundedness. But with it being pictured on this what are these? These are like different plants. And you notice too, they have wings. So it's also symbolizing some of that air element you're thinking, which is that dream world, bringing your dreams into reality, grounding yourself. <sighs> Hug a tree. But to bring your dreams into reality, dream the world into being is what it's asking. It makes perfect sense. Your thoughts can become your reality. I'm hearing again, hold your thoughts or what you're imagining. Hold it or keep it going for at least 17 seconds, which is fitting. Today's the 17th. Hold that for at least 17 seconds because then that's it's giving the opportunity for the universe to then meet you at that part to help bring that into reality. Yeah. Dream your world into being. Thank you, Lizard Spirit. What else can we share right now? For the collective, for those who are watching this or will watch this. I just want to remember the elements. <laughs> nice spider spirit. And look, it's another 11. I mean, five and six reduces to 11. Spider spirit. Uh, okay, spider has been working with me a lot lately. Maybe they, it's been working with you a lot. Have you been seeing a lot of spiders lately? <laughs> they are connected with the divine feminine energy. If you look through my feed, a couple video or a post down, I did a video because I found an exoskeleton of a spider and I felt that that was very symbolic for where I personally am. Um, but it may serve you, which is why I felt to share it. But this is number 56, which five plus six equals 11. So it's another 11 card, which is really neat. And then this spider saying, make your dreams real, which is just what I was just saying from Lizard Spirit, saying dream the world into being. It's just, 
can't make this up. Look at that. They're both talking about dreaming. It says a lot to do with Neptune. Everyone has Neptune in their chart somewhere. If you're familiar with your astrology chart, take a look. Hi, Lorna. Take a look at where Neptune is in your natal chart be, or where Neptune is transiting right now in your natal chart because that's a big part of what's being illuminated for you to really create um, and bring your dreams into reality. That's an added force there to help you. Look, look up where that is. So Spider here is saying, make your dreams real. Now, spiders have eight legs. That's also symbolic of your, your personal power, um, creating, using that power to create. Like Lizard was saying, you know, and Neptune is, is imagining what you want to create. A lot of us are being infused right now with the extra dose of creativity and um, we're being asked to really step into our purpose, unique, our unique purpose. The, the nudges that we're getting right now, um, maybe a lot of you right now are receiving a lot of dreams um, and those dreams may have clues to not only what to work on or to face, but also may be providing you clues for what you're here to do. Pay attention to that. If you have dreams and you wake up and you're like, what did this mean? Write it down. You may not understand right then and there when you wake up, but you may understand because you took time to write down your dream sequences so that later on in the day or a couple days from now, you might be like, oh, that's what that meant. Sometimes that happens. Make your dreams real. So what you're thinking about, what you're feeling nudged to do or letting yourself go with the flow of what you're being led to do may bring help assist to bring your dreams into reality. You may run into somebody um, that you don't know, but you feel like I need to talk to them or they may just come talk to you um, and you can find out that that's someone who's going to help you with the next stage of, of what you're here to create. They may, you never know. Hello, happy Easter from Australia. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, you just never know how things, I mean, the world is truly magical and here you got both these cards talking about making your dreams real. This is this is where we are. We are at the precipice of bringing our dreams into reality. I'm getting hyped because this is the energy I'm feeling. Pay attention to the signs. Pay attention to your daydreams even. We're being really inspired collectively right now to do something totally different. Some of us are given visions and inclinations to do something that's never been done. You've been given that precious gift to share that with the world. And the more you step forward, taking even a baby step with the intention of moving forward with that, can then spirit or whatever you want to source, God, the angels, will then help meet you with the next part in co-creating and bringing that dream into reality. You're given dreams for a reason. Follow them. Make them real. Take the step. It's a wonderful time to do that. Don't pay attention to all the chaos going on around you. You control your reality. You control your reality. I mean, look at the birds and look at nature. They're like unfazed by what's going on. <laughs> it's kind of how we need to be right now. Just unfazed by outer circumstances because you're here for a reason. I want you to remember that. Spirit wants you to remember that. And all of... <laughs> Vulture just came out. Vulture is one of my favorite birds. <sighs> Nothing is wasted. And, and nothing is wasted. All of the things you have gone through in life, 
the trials, the errors, the mistakes, whatever you wanna call them, they all served a purpose in helping you become who you are right now. And vulture is here. Mind you, vulture is a majestic bird. Vulture is, if you ever watch them, like really watch them, they may not be the prettiest bird, but everything serves a purpose. You serve a purpose. You're here on purpose. And Vulture is here to remind you that everything you have gone through has not been wasted. The trial and errors, the arguments, the, the people leaving your life, um, whatever it may be. What else? What else do you want to say? Um, the circumstances or uh, experiences that you've had, the good, the bad, the ugly, the magical, it has all served a purpose. Nothing is wasted. And if you know a little bit about vultures, they're not the ones that do the killing. They don't, they're not a predator. Um, they don't, they go after what has already passed on, what has already been done. And thanks for the love. Hey, Deja, they are part of the cleanup crew. <laughs> it reminded me that's part of what I, I'm part of the spiritual cleanup crew. <laughs> um, but Vulture, they clean up the rest of the carcass in helping to break down things so nothing is wasted. They, they're part of the cleanup crew. They clean up the carcasses that are there and, and they feed off of that. They don't do the killing like a, a hawk or an eagle or different types of raptors. So everything that you've gone through, the good, the bad, and the ugly, served a purpose in your personal development and helping you shift your, your thoughts on things to help you evolve. Um, so everything that has happened on your journey is for a reason in you developing. Nothing's wasted. Take time to reflect on your journey and find compassion because if you didn't have that bad relationship, you wouldn't realize what you do want so that you can now go after what you really do want. Having that job that had a bad manager or someone who, uh, I'll even go to that part, if you were in an abusive relationship with a person or something and had a bad, that helped you realize to stand more in your power, that you're not going to take that shit anymore. Everything served a purpose in your evolution. So that's what Vulture is here to, to remind you that nothing is wasted. And it's number 63, so six has to do with balance, has to do with harmony, balancing things out. And then you have three, which has to do with creativity. So it's taking what you've learned, finding that balance and creating something new with it. With all that you've learned, find something new to create. It's almost like ammunition. <laughs> In a good way, I mean that. It's like, Everything you've gone through, I have gone through some shit in my life. And everything that I've gone through in my life has got me to where I am now, where I'm fearless. I can't believe all the things that I've gone through that have led me to where I am now. It's almost unfathomable and unfathomable. <laughs> you get what I'm saying. I'm getting a little teary eyed because I feel it. I feel it. What you have gone through all of it has served a purpose in you becoming you. You may not see it now, but you will one day. Everything is for a reason. Thanks for hearing me. If you want, um, if any of you watching want to do a, a would like a card reading right now, just comment below. I guess I got to add that in, in my thing if you would like a reading right now just comment below that you would like a reading and I, as donations if you would like I put in my cash app and PayPal so if you would like to donate that's well I'm, I'm open to that as well uh, okay I'll, I'll do that if you want a read I'm just gonna add that really quick 
Okay, Deja, give me just one moment. I'm just gonna put this comment in the, add that in the description if you would like a card reading. Uh, one second. Just update that. I don't know how to update that. <laughs> I guess I'll just put it in the comments. Because I'm doing it on my laptop, but it doesn't say, like, update. So I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I got you, Deja. Hold on. How do I go back? This is confusing. But that's why I'm on, so I can get used to this. Oh, thanks, Lauren. I got you afterward. Well, I put it in the comments. So, Deja. Let's see. I'm going to use this animal deck. I'm feeling really connected to this one right at this moment. Let me reshuffle for a moment. Listen to the birds. They keep the birds are saying that. They're like, listen to us. <laughs> We're trying to help y'all calm down. <laughs> listen to the birds that are near you. Any time of the day when you're feeling stressed. I just feel to say this right now. When you're feeling stressed or bogged down, open a window or go outside, get some fresh air, and listen to the birds. Listen to the breeze it's gonna naturally just calm you down. Just felt to say that. All right, Deja, let's see what they, Divine Spirit, what can we share with Deja for her highest and best good? Please and thank you. Let's see. I heard breathe, Deja, breathe. Take those deep breaths. <laughs> Feel your feelings. What can we share with Deja right now? Be playful. Find ways to find your joy. Sandpiper, I'm seeing them right now. If so, if you don't know, like it's just like look at its legs. You see, it's like tee, 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 tee. it's be playful, dance. I just heard dance, and I'm seeing you dancing with Jalen. <laughs> dance, be silly, be playful, do some jokes, smile and laugh. Especially if things feel overwhelming. Find such, I'm just hearing laugh at your demons. Like laugh at, not necessarily in, in real life, but just like laugh at what may be going wrong because this, think about all the things that are going right. Be playful. And it's number 51. So five has to do with change. Doing something different. Doing something out of the ordinary. Bring in some new life into your routine. And then number one is taking action, taking the lead in doing something different. That's what Sandpiper, 
go watch, go look on YouTube of watching Sandpiper. Or maybe if you're able, maybe they're over by the beach. If you're able to go to the beach, um, they might even be there. I don't actually know where they live, but I've seen them. <laughs> maybe they'll be on the ocean and just watch them. They do this thing with their feet. It's so funny. That will bring you joy too. Be playful. Find ways to be playful. That's what the message is for you today. Was there anything else with that? I keep seeing the color lilac. Maybe there's a lilac bush near you. Or you can find something lilac or wear something lilac to help soothe you. Is what I just got too. I hope that resonated with you, Deja. Sandpiper. Lorna, are you still there? Just want to make sure you're still there. You're welcome. Yeah, it wasn't just purple, but it was like that lilac color. Like a lilac bush. Thank you. Lorna, are you there? Okay, good. I'm just reshuffling again. Lorna, Wolf just came. <laughs> wolf. What do you want to say? Take the lead. Take the lead. What are we taking the lead with? This is for Lorna, Divine Spirit. What can we share with Lorna right now that will serve her highest and best good? Oh, you got two cards. Let me just see. Well, first one, Fox Spirit. <laughs> yeah, I... I feel like Wolf is one of your guides. <laughs> I'm now I'm seeing it howling. Like, yeah, it's one of your guides. That's why you, you that's why you've been obsessed with wolves. It's one of your guides. And so Fox came out. Think on your feet. Now, this is number 27. Two has to do with your intuition, but it also has to do with the duality, seeing the polarities or finding the balance with the polarities. And then number seven also has to do with the intuition, also has to do with your, um, your inner guidance, your inner magic. So finding the balance with your inner magic, your inner intuitive self, your abilities, but so I keep hearing trickster. Now trickster, a lot of times, it doesn't necessarily mean the negative polarity of it. I mean, every animal has the polarity to it. But what I'm getting is more so using your abilities in a new way, finding an, another way to maneuver. And I feel like wolf spirit if you meditate or are able to get into a zone where you can connect with your guide, that I feel like Wolf may help you with this too, but finding a way to use your abilities in more adaptable ways is the sensation I'm getting. Like the alchemist, using your alchemist abilities that are in you or reconnecting with the inner alchemist within you. That's what Fox is kind of the inf that's the sensation I'm getting from this right now. And then Beaver came out. Beaver actually came out in um in one uh in the intuitive insights that I'm I'm after I do this I'm going to upload the full moon insights but 
Beaver was in that because we're building, as we're in this new season, we're in the spring season, new parts of us are emerging in a new way. And Beaver is here as an ally and for you at this time to build your foundation in a new way or reinforce your foundation. And I feel this might have to do with your belief systems, that some of your belief systems may be a bit different from those that are around you, but to stand firm with them because you have your unique way about you because you are unique and you're here for a unique purpose and you have a unique purpose. Lay a solid foundation. This is number six. It's finding balance with that. Finding balance with your unique abilities and using them in a new way to lay a new foundation going in, an, in a direction that more so suits who you are evolving and becoming with your most authentic self. That's the message, but it's like six, six, <laughs> 69. <laughs> <laughs> because two and seven is nine and then this is six um or you can associate this with six two seven or two seven six that number i felt to say <laughs> yeah wolf is still howling i'm seeing it just like whoo <laughs> You are, well, everyone has their own unique guides. Connect with them. They're your allies, they're your support system, but they're also attributes within you. The essence of them as your guides is also part of you. So remember that as well. Yeah, that was great. If any of you wanna share any donations, I put my cash up and PayPal in there. And if you would like a reading, just comment below. Whale spirit is here with us too. Whales are, uh, they're ancient beings. You know, okay, I'm just gonna go there because that is what I'm about. <laughs> going beyond, I'm, I'm, I'm putting myself out there. So, I consider myself a star seed. And this is not my first rodeo here on Earth. I've done this many times. I'm remembering a lot. A lot of you are also, this is not your first rodeo here on Earth. <laughs> um, whale spirit is here. I see it swimming. This also could have to do with the Neptunian energy that is very expansive right now with Jupiter conjuncted right at this time in the planetary alignments. And um, you're welcome. You're welcome, Lorna. Did that resonate with you? I hope it did. Um, whales are, they're the extraterrestrials too here in the oceans helping keeping the grids and sending out messages to all that is uh, on this planet as well. They're very graceful and loving and very majestic in their habitat, but they're helping us to collectively remember who we are. And they just were like wanting me to share that part. Remember who you are. You're more than just your body. You don't have to believe me, and that's fine. You don't have to believe anything I'm saying, but I just felt to say that in, in hopes that it rekindles a certain spark within you. Let's see what comes out right now, sort of collective. What do you wanna share? For someone watching, keep practicing your affirmations. Keep practicing your affirmations. Do them daily to build up your confidence. Hawk spirit. Let spirit be your guide. And you can take that however way. It could be let God be your guide. Let the angels be your guide. Um, but hawk here, which hawks? 
are very majestic. They are um, raptors. Yes, I do. People around. Oh, I forgot I got my laptop right here. I didn't even have to click that on my phone. <laughs> People with different use and just yesterday was noticing how the same conditioning to make myself small to accommodate them was yeah. Sorry, the message be a leader. I feel like that also has to do with um your wolf guide. Um being the leader and creating or attracting your own pack. I just got two um, because sometimes <laughs> I can speak for myself personally too. Sometimes, and this is the challenge as being emotional human beings is we sometimes really like to be with people, but sometimes, you know, we evolve um, and we have to change our circle um, or but we never should shrink ourselves. I had to learn that. We don't want to shrink ourselves and who we know ourselves to be to accommodate the people around us. I'm glad and I'm proud of you for noticing that, that pattern. That's a great example of how, how things will come up for us to recognize how to pivot or to really just stand in our power because sometimes we are the ones that are the lone wolf setting the example or paving the way for others to follow in their own unique way. We're not supposed to be the same as everyone. We're, it's, I mean, it's really doing ourselves and others a disservice to follow doing what everyone else is doing. Because <laughs> it's not us being authentic and we're coming into this time where we have to be our authentic selves and stand out almost like a lone wolf um doing things our own unique way shining our light in our own unique way even when no one else gets it they may not get it now they might not ever get it and that's okay because you're being true to you and that's keeping your power within you and not letting someone else dwindle that flame or fire so I'm so proud of you and thank you for being open and sharing that with us too. That's an example. That's sharing an example for others doing that. Um, so Hawk here also. <laughs> I just saw a wolf walk away. <laughs> Wagging its tail. <laughs> um, yes, using your voice in your own unique way. Shine your light, you're very welcome. Thank you, Wolf, for, for appearing as well. <laughs> Wolf is gone, Wolf has left the building. <laughs> but Hawk here, I'm sure many of you have seen hawks soaring in the sky, circling, and, and, and even in this season, I'm seeing hawk right now. Um, it's mating season, mind you, we're in this very loving, energy right now and it's about loving ourselves in new ways letting spirit be our guide and and and, and guiding us if you, if you're seeing hawks i feel like saying this a lot of you may be seeing hawks watch them observe them when you sit and observe one here's the great thing when you're seeing hawks or any animal or insect for that matter that catches your attention pause be in that moment that's part of the message that these animals or earth creatures are sharing with us to be in that moment one it helps us stop the chatter going on in our mental because we're focusing on that animal so when you see a hawk focus on watching it let so that all those thoughts fall to the wayside that you were thinking or worry, whatever you're worrying about. It's a, this is sometimes they're great distractions. So when you're watching hawk, just a hawk or any animal for that matter, just sit there for that moment that they're in your view and just observe them. 
and allow different sensations to come over you if that happens. Whatever thoughts are coming to you at that time and you're watching it, allow it. That's you receiving its message or its medicine. And watch what it's doing. Watch how it's moving its wings. Watch how it's moving against the wind currents or the thermal currents in the sky. Just observe. Just observe it and let yourself be taken over in that moment. It's, it's therapy. It's nat nature's therapy. Um, and allow whatever comes to you, come to you. It was meant for you to see. And that's how they guide us. We're connected. They, they, we all work together. Um, and when you're not getting the support from those around you, sometimes that's when nature shows up to be like, hey, you're not alone. You may be alone in the human sense. Um, because there may not be many that are resonating with you and how you're evolving. Or you've had to distance yourselves from some toxicity um, in different environments or people, places, or things. But the animals are here. Nature is here. The trees are here. Still, they're here. They're a stable force grounded here. Um, this also has to do, because it's a hawk and they fly, this also has to do with the air element. Um, you're thinking. That's why I was saying about, like, just let everything else fall to the wayside when you have an appearance of some nature spirit or, or animal or hawk or an eagle. Um, but these are also signs. This is part of when you hear of synchronicities. That could be it too. Hawk showing up. And this is three and two, so 32. 32, three plus two equals five. Changing your thinking, changing your perspective in that moment. Three being the creativity, finding an, uh, uh, your creative outlet. And two, finding your balance with that creative outlet. Um, Finding a new balance with taking action in a new creative way. That's what I just got. Thank you, Hawk. I feel like using this deck now. These are my, what I consider color therapy cards. Um, sometimes when certain colors are soothing to our body and our senses, and I like to use these cards when, just to get an extra way of balancing ourselves out. So let's see what colors come up right now. Let's see, let me reshuffle this one. <gasps> oh my gosh. The Cardinal just came staring right at me. Oh my goodness. Hello, Cardinal. <laughs> I really love the birds. You see hawks too from time to time? What other, so you, so you lay, you're in Australia. I, I heard you say, well, I didn't hear you. I read you say. <laughs> um, are you, what are some of the main raptor type birds? in Australia. They have condors. If you don't mind sharing, I'm curious. I have not in this life been to Australia. Titmouse just came again. Yeah, what are some of the, the, the common birds, if you're aware? Um, of what they're called, or the, some of the big birds of prey. Not sure. That's okay. I just was curious. Let's see. What's a color that we can ponder over? Divine Spirit Source. Cockatoo birds. Are those the ones that that can talk? 
too. Like you can train them to talk, I think. I see them on TikTok. I think some of the ones that become, um, what do you call it? Yeah, they, I'm pretty sure they have eagles over there too. Eagles are magnificent creatures. I mean, all creatures are magnificent in their own right. They all serve a purpose. Ants just coming to me again right now. Ant was one of the main ones that came up in the insights. I have to do another video after I'm done here. I'm going to stay on just a little bit longer. Lay, would you like a reading? Would you like a card? Let me know. If you do, just comment if you want to. Um, eagles are very majestic. Um, I want to say that they are also like high on the totem pole of um, predators. Galas? I'm not sure what those are. I'm going to have to look that up. Um, okay. Let me just see what the collective and then a color for the collective and then I'll do a card reading for you too. Um, what color can we ponder over right now that will help us with where we're collectively going? Huh, brown. <laughs> and it says establish boundaries. And that is something I feel collectively, yeah, we, we are. Um, I have a heavy 12 house, so I'm very tuned in and, and to the collective when I need to be to be of service for the greater good. And I, I kept getting that, like getting grounded. Dark eyed Jun Junko just popped up. Getting grounded um, and anchored here on earth um, really helps us come back to our core. And this is number 12 but also establishing boundaries. Like once we're really grounded and firmly rooted in who we are, not letting people waver us from who we believe ourselves to be. And that's a key part right now that a lot of us are facing is really not being unwavered, not being influenced by other people taking us off of our course of where we're going or where we're headed or what we're creating, bringing our dreams into reality. Um, if we know fully like this feels good, this feels right, I'm supposed to do this. We really do have to establish our boundaries. If that means removing ourselves from situations, from people, places, and things so that we are unwavered. Um, that's part of establishing our boundaries and this being number 12. So one is taking leadership and establishing those boundaries and finding our balance with those boundaries established as well. I want to open this up really quick. Stay with me one moment, Lay. Because um, usually with this, there's an affirmation with it. I'll just want to read this really quick. Brown is a color of earthiness, a direct conduit to nature, animal, animal wisdom, and universal wisdom that creates healthy boundaries and attains a balanced perspective. Connect to nature's healing properties and revive your energy and creativity with brown. So it could be just staring at the dirt. <laughs> We're finding just something brown. Wear it. Um, use the brown ray to deepen your connection to the earth and create healthy boundaries. And this is what it says. Go outside, find a stick, and draw a circle on the ground. Stand inside the circle. Breathe in some fresh air. Allow the brown rays to connect you to the earth. Say, divine light, I choose to create new boundaries for myself and others. I choose to listen to my own guidance and follow it. Respect myself, value myself, and love myself. Then state how you would like to be treated by others and only leave the circle when you feel clear about your boundaries. I'm going to do this too. I just wanted to share that. Thank you for listening. That was cool. I'm just going to leave that up for a moment. All right, Leigh. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I 
Thanks for hanging in there and watching. Did that resonate with you, Leia, in some way? About the brown color, establishing boundaries? I know it did for me. I'm still working on that. I'm glad it resonated. A lot of us do. You're not alone. I still do too. Because I care so much about things and I, I'm a former people pleaser. <laughs> <laughs> because I love and care about everyone so much. And I want us, you know, as a starseed, I have memories that come up a lot where I remember living in places where we didn't have to do all this stuff. Like, we just, we didn't even have to speak. I remember speaking telepathically, like, and um, it's like, you know, there wasn't all of this chaos. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't so many mean people. I, 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 you know, ever since I was a kid, I was just like, I don't understand why people act in the way they act. And I'm just like, we, why can't we all just get along? Like, there's so much more to life than fighting and all of this stuff. But, um, but I also now understand why I'm here. And, um, a lot of that is, you know, for other star seeds too, is to, to anchor back in that divine light and, and help us remember who we are. We don't got to live that way. There's so much more to life and we can have so much more of an abundant life if we pivot and do things differently. And we're coming into that, I feel, step by step by step. So let's see. Divine spirit. What would serve lay lays highest and best good right now? Please and thank you. <sighs> hmm. Swan came up. Time for a deep dive. And this is number 60. This is such a beautiful energy, especially with this rise of feminine energy coming back into balance and mind you it's number 60. six has to do with balance it has to do with harmony finding an even way of doing things and then it's emphasized with the number zero zero has to do with that god force that infinite energy so it's backing like wow we're going to balance this out and swans are graceful, majestic creatures. So time for a deep dive. Mind you, swans, they are land and water, primarily in water as it's depicted here. Feminine energy, divine feminine energy, coming back into balance with the fem now, Mind you, men and women, or however you identify, we all have masculine and feminine energies within us. But here, it's bringing and highlighting that feminine energy, that creative energy. Um, also with, with it being the water element has to do with your emotions. Finding that balance in your emotions. Um, but I'm seeing swan right now too. Swans, when they're feeling, if there's like a threat um, or, or something that's um, trying to get in the past their the boundaries established they are fearful they will defend their turf so there also is that um, element to it of like if someone's trying to cross the established boundaries you have you, you know to stand up for yourself and uphold your boundaries so this is the message for you lay I hope this resonates and um, yeah White, mind you, swans are also white, so there's that purity, that um, angelic force as well is here. I hope that resonated for you. Thanks for listening. Ooh. I like swans. Swans are very graceful. I hear the doves. <laughs> I'm just going to stay on for a few more minutes and then I'm going to go.
Did that resonate with you? Did you have any questions? Finding emotional balance is what I'm hearing. But asserting your boundaries as well. I feel like this could also apply as well, getting um, that groundedness with brown, staying, anchoring into earth. I feel like saying, and you take this, of course, if it doesn't resonate, that's fine. But I'm hearing visualizing roots coming also out of your feet to stay grounded. Yeah, you can do this. You are made to do this. Reflect on all that you have gone through when you can, all that you've experienced on your journey. And find a lot of times the things that happen that, that aren't going necessarily the way that we want. If you can, look at it as what is it showing you for you to maybe stand up for yourself in a new way, um, to uphold your boundaries. Sometimes we got to remove ourselves from different people, places, and things that aren't serving us. Um, one step at a time. Be kind to yourself, too. But one step at a time. That's all you can do. It's, it's about the intention, though. You know, when you go and do, take that one step, but you have the pure intention, like, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to, every day I'm going to work a little bit more and more and more and more as the day goes on. Yeah. So, I know what that's like as well. Um, those that's why I felt with the energy I'm feeling is we all have had, how do I want to say this? Those challenging experiences that you've experienced. I'm hearing right loud and clear. Take your power back. Take your power back. What I've come to realize from the abuse, mistreatment that I've experienced in my life, as hurtful as it was, as damaging and traumatic as it was. It has taught me over time, this is, <laughs> and I mean over time, meaning years of working through my traumas and experiences and that one, when you take the objective point of view, it's shown me truly how weak, how damaged the people who are, per, who are doing that are. When you take the objective point of view, it does take years. Depending on the severity of it, it can, it can take a whole lifetime. I'm still working through things. I, I, When you take that objective point of view and you can, you know, just kind of look kind of like when, with Hawk, looking at it from a higher perspective, you see how weak and damaged and hurt these people are. It's the hurt people hurting people. And over time, I've learned to have the compassion to be like, wow, they're just hurt people they got their own stuff too. And it's not saying or justifying what they did. I'm not saying that. But to help in the process of healing so that you can firmly establish your boundaries. How do we want to say this? To 
You can literally, I'm just hearing, you can literally just say, I call all my power back from every person, place, or thing in any time and space and dimension. I call all my power back to me. And then you're grounding it, like I was mentioning about visualizing roots going down out of your feet into the earth so you're firmly footed and grounded connected to the divine earth energy or however way you want to do this this is just the way i do it and you call your power back to you you can even feel it because you may be an empath as people call it i don't really like terms as i mentioned in the beginning so you realize your resiliency keep doing that Keep realizing your strengths. As you take your power back, realize all that you are doing and you'll, you'll start building your confidence step by step by step. Start building your confidence more and more and more. I'm still working on it. I'm not all the way there, but I'm way better than where I was. And that is that helps me see my resilience to keep going and to stand more firmly grounded in who I am. And I share that for you as well. You are. I bet you are. Because these experiences, when we go through them, a lot, I've come to realize that a lot of these experiences are to really just show us more of who we are to realize, I don't want that anymore. I'm not going to tolerate that anymore. I deserve better. Because I know I'm a great person. I know I'm pure of heart. I know I'm doing what's best for me and for others. And that helps. Avoiding people is a great way too. <laughs> it really is. I had to learn to be alone. I get it. <laughs> I had to learn to be alone to really feel all my feelings because being that empathetic person <laughs> where I feel everything, um, I realized how much I was taking on that wasn't mine. So that's why I say I call my power back to bed. I also release all that is not mine back to their owners with love as well so that I can feel energetically the difference of what's mine and what's not. And... I'm getting way, as I've been practicing, this is part of my daily ritual. I do this every day. Sometimes I do it a few times a day, if, especially if I have to go out to the store or go here or there. You know, so I, there's also protection, but everyone's different. Uh, hi, Evangeline. Um, so just do what you feel called to do. You know what is best for you. From these experiences that you've gone through, Observe it so you can find your own way of doing things. You're already doing it. I feel like I'm not even telling you anything new. You already, I feel like you know this. So keep doing what you're doing. This is part of your journey to experience, but to know so that you can really recreate your life in a new way. And this is a great time, the season that we're in. Actually, wait, in Australia... It's not springtime, is it? What season is it in it, over where you are? Hello? When you find a good person, you stick to those ones. You could probably feel it. You can feel who's authentic. It is autumn. I was going to say it's probably the opposite. <laughs> Because I'm in Massachusetts, USA. So right now it's springtime, but that's not where you are. So you're going in the autumn season. So this is when things are starting to... Like I said, I've never been to Australia in this life. So things are different. Dove just flew by. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I hope this resonated with you and I hope it helped you in, in, in a little bit. If you ever would feel called to do a personal reading with me, please reach out on my website, rosaleachjourney.com. And I'd be happy to be of service with you in that way as well, if you would like to go deeper 
even if not now, another time. I'm, I'm grateful for your, your appearance and, and letting me do a reading for you right now. Hi, Evangeline. If you would like a reading or anyone watching, just comment below and I'd be happy to be of service. Yeah, I'm glad it's been good for you. Keep going. Keep going. Despite whatever's happening, keep going. Remember who you are. Keep doing something that brings you joy every day. Every day. Find something to laugh about. I just felt to relay to you, um, humming. Humming can be therapeutic too. It help, also helps um, clear up throat chakra too. Humming. Hmm. It vibrates your whole body. How old am I? I'm grown. <laughs> I mean, I, I can answer that in so many different ways. <laughs> um, I've started to come to the realization of not celebrating birthdays in the sense because that ages you. That's my current belief now. Now, mind you, I'll share a little bit of this part. So, cardinals right there. I associate cardinals with angelic energies and forces. <laughs> so, in earth years, and midlife, <laughs> um, but my soul is very ancient. I know that much. I'm an ancient soul. So to ask how old I am, I, I don't know. I've, I've, I've been, my soul has been living for a long time. <laughs> I'll just leave it there. <laughs> Thank you for being with me. So I'm just gonna, let's see here. I have been going for some time. I'm going to stay for five more minutes and then I'm going to get off. Is there anything else, Divine Spirit, that we can share with the collective right now and for those who will be viewing this, even on the replay? Yeah, I, I came to, I mean... Oh, so maybe that's why we know each other. I was a Jehovah's Witness too. And look at where I'm doing now. <laughs> yeah, I used to be, I was raised as a Jehovah's Witness. And um, yeah, that's a whole nother, whole nother story. Actually, if you look at my YouTube channel, I have a few videos on there um, talking about my journey. Um, because I've come a long way. Yeah, I was. Cardinals there still. Yeah. I, uh, how can I bring this shortly? Let's see. I was born in third generation and I was disfellowshipped when I was 21. And then, 20, so then I tried going back a few, you know, the, the whole, my family, my dad was an elder. I don't know if he still is or not. They don't talk to me. I was shunned. I went through all of that. Um, but that was part of my journey that led me to really understand myself because I had no of my immediate family there. So, um, so I've been out since I was 21. I tried going back a few times. And uh, they were like, no, <laughs> they said I wasn't ready. And I was like, anyways, that pushed me more and more to find a new way of being. So I went through all of that, started over many, many times. And um, yeah, that sucks. So uh, actually what helped me wake up back in 2017, 2018, even though I had been out, I didn't like really, even though I woke up to the world being fake, um, I woke up later to, in 2018, to 
the real dark, deep depths of the Jehovah's Witnesses organization from actually someone, a friend telling me about the Austra Australian Royal Commission and about the abuse cases. Um, and that's what was really opened me up to being like, oh my gosh, I am so done with this organization. <laughs> and I, I went through a, a huge transformation and awakening at that time to another level. Um, and then that led me to just going on my own path of self-discovery. Um, I found, I discovered, you know, some of those XJW groups, um, found out there are a whole bunch of other people going through similar things. Um, and then I found <clears throat> Coach Rod, I think his last name is Allgood, uh, who is in the Empowered Minds. He has a group on Facebook and uh, he had a course for deprogramming, which really helped me. It was like a three-week course, and I finished it in four days because at that time, I was like, I just want to get deprogrammed. I'm done with all of this shit. And um, that helped me, and, and then I started my self-discovery of finding different things, and um, you know, took me a long time to touch something like this, uh, like these cards, because of you know the programming that's associated with that. Um, but then I was like, I'm just going to start doing all the things they told me not to do because I want to find out for myself. And one thing led to, yeah, that course for me was very helpful. Um, yeah, the whole thing about pedophiles, I I knew about that in because my dad was an elder, and as being a very intuitive person since I was a kid, I knew about um, even pedophiles in the congregation I grew up in. Um, but yeah, there's so much. That's a whole nother, whole nother. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you want, you can follow me on YouTube if you feel like it. But um. Uh, so anyways, that led me to a, a lot of self-discovery and, and trying things out for myself. And, 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 you know, the first time I was still fearful of different things, like with this, the cards or astrology and, and all of that. And it wasn't free. Um, but I, I don't know if he, in that group, if he... I think at one point he was offering some free ones, but I don't know if he still is or not. I did. I paid for mine for the, the training that he, um, the, the course that he offered, but, um, I've come a long way and I've come into my own and found my own sense of spirituality and realized, um, as I kept taking steps following my intuition where I was being led, um, I discovered what was true for me. And that's really what I'm advocating for is finding for people to find it was worth it. If for the if you still have a lot of the lingering programming going on, so you're not staying in the anger. Because I mean anger is part of it. It's like, you know, um just like there's so many parts to it how do I want to say this it's 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 challenging for me because there's so much with all of these parts you're bringing up that I can speak on and and um it it really has to do with what is still lingering in your mental right now, if the course would be worth it or not. Um, talk to him. He's very friendly where you can even like private message him if you really need to talk and he'll set up a time that actually ch chat one-on-one -on -one just to see if it's for you or not. Reach out to him. That's the best. I, I did this back in 2018. So, and it's 2022 right now. So it really depends on where you are. Um, and it's not necessarily just about if you're still angry or not. There's just plenty, of course, to be angry about, um, especially when you're abused, um, which really we all were abused. But um, it's more so about what what still linger if there's things still lingering with the thought processes, with the programming of the Jehovah's Witness organization, if that is still lingering within you then I feel the course would serve you. 
um, because at that time, even though I had been so many years away from the organization, the um, I was still in cognitive dissonance with a lot of, you know, that deep indoctrination. If you're still having some of that indoctrination still in you and it's conflicting with where you're wanting to go, then it might serve you. But if you're, you have already processed all of that and let it out and it's not bothering you anymore, then it may not serve you. It's more so like it's a deprogramming course. It's to get those beliefs out of you to switch into another trajectory to have you go on your way. And it served me to really just jumpstart to, to realize, okay, that's not for me. This is false, blah, 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 blah. And now I can't, not blah, 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 but just for me, it helped segue me into going in the course of life that I needed to go in. It helped shift my trajectory into self-development and self-exploration in a new way without the, the lingering hindrance of um, that indoctrination anymore. Is the easiest way I can put it right now. <laughs> After many years of had done that. I am going to get going off of this. <clears throat> Yeah, like that part, I I have I, I completely understand because um, I have since twenty one, twenty two, my parents have not been in my life. My oldest brother has not talked to me, um, and this is you know over twenty years now. So I understand, and that does take a long. It took me a long time. Um, it took me a long time to get through that. And um, it doesn't hurt anymore. I actually, I, I had came to a part where, like I said, in my, my own evolution and going through my own trauma and healing myself that I was able to take that... Uh, wider perspective view on my parents and, and, and of my family. And I, I forget, I did forgive them, but I also, how do I want to word it without being long winded? <laughs> it took a long time. I'm talking over 10 years for me to really I had to grieve them. I had to grieve my living parents. And I, I say this because I feel like even people who aren't, weren't raised in Jehovah's Witness, a lot of people are realizing the toxicity and having to leave. Hello everyone, hi, uh, hi Keandra, hi Damaris. Um, I had to grieve my living parents because I knew they were not gonna be in my life. Um, that no matter what I did, and there were many, many years that I, you know, tried to do things to get them. It, it just wasn't worth it because we were going and I was going in a whole nother direction with my life. I wanted to live my life in a different way than them. Um, and I had to grieve them. I had to go through that process of grieving them to then find compassion. And then when I... I feel like I finished that grieving process after a period of time where then I was able to look at them and realize and find that compassion um, to see them for who they really were and to, to realize they still did the best they could. I had to find that compassion even though they were in fact some of my abusers. Um, to realize that, you know, hurt people hurt people, but they also did the best they could. It's it's a whole story. Maybe I'll make a video on it, describing in a bit more detail that can help not only those who were a Jehovah's Witness at one point, but also because there's many people collectively now too that are realizing the, how toxic their family was and they're also having to withdraw. So I feel like that's something, uh, thank you for bringing this up because I guess that is something that would serve the greater good in me explaining from my point of view through my experience. 
um, it's not an easy feat. And you have to, it's, it's like you almost have to have grace with yourself. It's, it's a lot of healing. There's a lot of healing that we're all collectively going through in our own experiences and having to leave behind those we cared for. But we, it's, it's loving yourself. It's part of loving yourself, really, um, to move forward into finding your peace. Um, you're not going to please everyone, but also understanding the purpose they serve. I mean, it's, there's so many other detailed parts to that. So... I'm going to write that down because I feel it would be of service for me to make a video on that. And I'll post it on my YouTube. So if any of you are interested, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Rosalie's Journey. Um, because it's, I feel it would benefit not just those who were Jehovah's Witnesses, but also those that are having to steer away from their family because they're just toxic. Yeah. <laughs> I am going to have to get going because I need to eat now. Now I'm getting hungry. It's three o'clock my time. How do I want to word this? Oh. Thank you so much, Leigh, for bringing that up. It's 5 a.m. Why are you up at 5 a.m.? It's none of my business. <laughs> um, if any of you would like, we're still in this full moon energy. So I do, I just, before I get off, I do offer um, video, uh, a personal, I, well, I offer live a session to do a full moon reading because we're still in that full moon energy. So there's a lot of things being illuminated for us. Um, and that, but there's also, I have the option where I can just do a video recording and give you a link um, to your personal full moon reading. So if you would like that, please go to my website, rosaliesjourney.com, and I would be grateful to offer that to you, um, as well as other offerings that I have on my website, if you feel drawn to that. I will be uploading, after I get off and I make my food, I'm going to start uploading um, a video I made earlier today for the collective. And it was very insightful. Just so you know, everyone, I, if you know me personally, I am not one to have short talk. I'm not going to do a 10 minute reading for the, it's, it's impossible. <laughs> I'm very long winded. I'm a storyteller. I, I have to share the many layers of things when I do readings. So, um, stay tuned for that. It will be on my YouTube um, and then there will be clips on my TikTok as well if you're if you're subscribed on there as well. So thank you so much, Lay. Thank you everyone who is watching today. And I appreciate you. And I wish you the best. Remember you are love. Remember your authentic self. Remember who you are. You're so much more than what this world is telling you you are. You are infinite. You have so much creative ability within you. Remember to bring your dreams, those dreams that you think cannot come into real life, they can. Remember who you are. You are amazing and you're unique on purpose. You are unique on purpose. That is your purpose to be unique, to stand out, to bring what you do differently from anyone else, to bring that into being. The dreams you have, that visions that may have been given to you, they were given to you on purpose. Co-create with spirit, with God, with the universe to create those dreams into reality. They can become real. Believe in yourself. Love yourself and go outside and get grounded. <laughs> I love you all. Thank you so much for listening. 
And until next time, I'm Rosalie and peace and blessings and love to all of you.